right, in this video, this is the custom calendar that I've made in KOWP. It is a component, so you can use this on any custom app. I got the first request to make a calendar back when I first started messing around with KOWP, three years ago or something like that now. I knew I wasn't ready for it. So here we are three years later, uh, probably dozens of requests for me to make one, and here we go. And this is what I wanted my calendar to do. I wanted to be able to go to any month, any day of any year. I wanted to be able to tap on a particular date and I wanted to see the event or events for that day. And not only that, I wanted to be able to tap on that event and it opens up my Google Calendar app to that specific event. Well, I think I figured it out. So right now, yes, it is August 24th, 2018. And yes, you can do some basic styling with the calendars. You can hide the overlap dates. From particular months you can move things around as you can see my agendas down here at the bottom for these so that's basic styling we have little dots here to indicate that we have an event or events for that particular day right now august the 24th 2018 i have one of one but what we can do for any date any month any years we can tap on that word that event and it will open up google calendar to that specific event Pretty cool, huh? Now, let's just fast forward. Here's September. Notice when we go to a new month, I have it set so that it's not showing anything on the agenda until I tap a specific date. For example, tapping on September the 18th, notice it says 9-18-2018, one of one, Uncle Charles's birthday. Now, Uncle Charles's birthday, I have it set to repeat every year on September the 18th. So if I tap on that, it says that it's Saturday, September 18th, 2010, but that's when I originally put that event in my calendar. So if you have something set up to repeat, it's going to show that original date that you put it in your calendar. I hope that makes sense there. Now, if I come down here to September the 29th, 2018, there's a triathlon that day. So if I tap on that, that is for that specific date. So notice it does say Saturday, September 29th. And yeah, so, I mean, if you have something set to repeat, it's actually going to show the original date, at least for Google Calendar, for me at least, that's what it's showing. Now I'm just going to go through some more months here, and I'm going to go into 2019. And let's go to Saturday, January 5th, 2019. I have one of two events. So we have a birthday on this day. That must be one of the folks over on my Google Peeps in G+. If I tap on that, it will open up that specific date, as you can see there. And we have two events, so I can use the arrows to cycle through them. We have another birthday on that particular day. It'll open up that specific one. This is what I wanted my calendar to do. Now, some bugs that I have worked out. Today is August the 24th, and it's not January the 24th, 2019. So the today indicator is not showing. That's something that I had to work out. And also something else I had to work out, mini bugs actually. So if you find any more bugs, please leave a comment below. But something else I wanted to happen was, you know, right now I'm on event two of two for January the 5th, 2019. Well, if I go to maybe January the 8th, notice it reset back to one of one. Even though I was just on event number two from a different date, I had to set a code to make it go back to event one if there was only one event for that particular day. As a matter of fact, I always have it regardless of how many events you have. Let me find one that has more than one, one of six. So it's always going to reset to the first one. And then if you tap on a date that does not have an event, it's going to say nothing scheduled. Not only that, we can tap the month up here at the top to go back to the current day, showing our events for that particular day. And I hope you see how useful this is. Now, in terms of explaining everything, <laughs> if uh, you thought my weather graphs series was long, if you thought my Bitcoin graph series was long, if you thought my Google sidebar series was long, those don't even hold a candle to this. I'm going to tell you. But what I do have over here is a document that I will put inside of my KOWP craft math stuff to share folder. I'll also put this component in my free components folder. Look for craft cow v1. I will update that. If there's any bugs, I'll start doing a v2, v3. Just make sure you get the current version. Once you open up this component, there are some globals that you can adjust that are non-destructive such as the font, whether you want Sunday to be first. Check out this one here. I got Monday being first. The OLAP color, that's the overlap from previous months. 
the normal color. That's this lighter blue that you see. Today color, that's this red rectangle that you see. The event color, that's going to be the indicator color that you see here. The cell width, that will adjust the width of all of these cells in the calendar. The date height, that's technically going to adjust the cell height of these particular dates. Day of week height, that's going to adjust the height between here and here. And basically it's adjusting the height of uh, some padding or spacing in between the days of the week in your calendar. The event size, that will adjust the size of the event indicators. The event up down, you can move this dot up or down. You can also move it left or right inside of each cell. Just don't go too far because you will notice your calendar starts to space out a little bit if you go too far up, too far down, too far left, or too far right. And we can also do that for our numbers, the actual dates. We can go up or down, we can go left or right. And to show you what I mean, I mean, here we have the number to the left and the event indicator to the right. If I come back to this one, it's more like it's centered in the cell where I have the date above the event indicator. Text size, that will actually adjust the way I have it set up. It's going to adjust the size of everything based on some percentages. Today's shape, I have a circle here, I have a rectangle there, and more of a square shape for that one. And then the GV weekdays. You can change those to whatever you want, assuming you're gonna use Sunday through Saturday. Or for those of you who don't speak English, you can put whatever days of the week you want inside of there, and literally you can pick days that you want to use. That's what I have inside of that list global right there, as a matter of fact. Now the destructive stuff. I don't recommend messing with them. There's a lot of stuff in there and there's a lot of codes. And some of the codes are short. By short, I don't mean one line. Maybe there are two or three lines or something like that inside of the custom editor. But what you will see are some long ones. GV row one, for example. And this one right here is uh, probably the longest code I have done in custom, that one right there. This code here, goes all the way down there to the end of that blue. I don't know how many lines that is, but that's what determines. That code there determines what date goes on these other rows other than row one. Row one I had to treat a little bit different because I had to determine the first day of the month, what day it occurred on, and then the rest of these rows kind of built off of that. You will notice that I'm using SI module index quite a bit. Let me go ahead and show you why right now. So I have three different calendars, same component. If I go into craft cal v1 and we have everything and then we have calendar rows. So suppose I wanted to come in here and I wanted to, you know, make a drastic change to every single cell in my calendar. Let's just suppose for some weird reason I want to uh, put a dollar symbol in every single one of these sales or just something you wanted to change. Well, that's why I'm using SI module index. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this first stack group and it's gonna be the first row. Now what we can do, and you may think, oh, I'm about to ruin the whole thing. No, this is the power of SI module index. I'm going to delete everything except for that first one. I'm going to come into that overlap group that has the potential today indicator, uh, the number, the cell, the event indicator, the button for the agenda where we can tap that event and then we can go even further with that. But I'm gonna add something else. I'm going to add a font icon and what the heck, let's just do a star. I said I was gonna do a dollar symbol, but that's not what I'm really after here. And let me just adjust this paint to where it's semi-transparent so that way we can see whatever the other stuff is. All right, suppose I want a star on every single cell of my calendar. Right now I only have it on one. Well, here is the power of SI module index, M index. If I take that entire overlap group that has the text, now this star and all that other stuff, if I copy and paste, and I'm gonna go all the way across, you will notice that the star is showing up. Not only that, it's updating the numbers like it should. That's the power of SI module index. Not only that, what we have to do now, I mentioned earlier, we treat the first row a little bit different than we do all of the other rows because that first row has a lot going on. We have to determine, you know, where's the first day of the month at? Is it Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? And not only that, are we talking about Sunday being the first day on our calendar or the last day of the week on our calendar? A lot of stuff going on. But if I come in here and I'm now about to go crazy, you may think, but no, I'm not. I'm going to take every single row except for the second row 
and I'm going to delete it. Now, let me just go back to this first row. I'm going to go to any one of these elements and I'm just going to copy that star. Now, what you don't want to do is you don't want to copy this entire row to the second row. Be careful with that. But I did copy that star. I'm going to go into my second row now. I'm going to delete everything in my second row except for the first element. So boom, all I have is that five. Go inside of there, I'm going to paste that star. So now I'm going to back out of here. I'm going to take this entire overlap group and I'm going to copy and paste just like I did on row one. We now have stars on our calendar. But now we have to take this row, which I'm calling my other rows. We treat this different than row one. I can take that entire row now, folks, and watch this. I can copy and paste and I'm going to do this six times because that's the most number of rows that a calendar can have depending on the number of the days in the month when the first day of the month is and all that stuff but what you'll see now is that we have stars everywhere we still have our numbers correctly we still have the today indicator yeah i know <laughs> i hope you enjoy this uh pick it up from my free components folder i look forward to seeing what type of customizations and styling you make to it and that's it for this video i hope it helps